Hey guys, hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. On this channel, we try to cover all things reality, TV news and gossip, as well as trending topics. And today we're going to be talking about a crazy story concerning a 90 day fiance couple, Angela and Michael. This story is wild. I actually recorded the TikTok last night. I did not get done editing and uploading until like 1 30 but when i woke up that tiktok had like over 150,000 views because this story is crazy it is wild now just in case you guys you know we don't cover 90 day fiance a lot on here so i do kind of want to give a little backstory for anybody that's not familiar with this couple at all i'm going to give um, a little bit of backstory and then we're going to go into what exactly is happening okay so Angela Dean and Michael, I don't know how to say his last name, but his name is Michael. He is from Nigeria. They have been dating for since 2018. Okay. They met on social media. Like, uh, I don't know if it's a dating app or just like on Facebook or something, but they met on social media. They started dating. And not long after they started dating, they appeared on, I think it was season two of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. Remember when Michael got the pa? I never let that one go. That's why. Okay. So I'm going to go a little bit over their like relationship timeline just to give anybody that's new an idea of who the couple is and why a lot of people's not shocked about this happening. Okay. Now over, you guys see right here, a YouTube channel that is John Yates's YouTube channel. John Yates is really good friends with Angela. John Yates is a YouTuber. He covers mainly the 90 day franchise the 90 day shows but he is good friends with some of the the characters from the show and he is really good friends with angela so he's the one that broke the story about michael missing and then he broke the story about the fact that michael wasn't actually missing but that michael ran away from angela so john yates has two videos up the first video is him going live saying hey guys i'm at my friend angela's house Michael's missing. And, you know, Angela's upset. A lot of people in the comment section, they're like, what if he took off? He just got to America. He's been trying to get to, to get to America for seven years. Like, this is what if this is what he wanted and he bounced now that he's here? And Angela was like, I really don't think that's what happened here because he left with nothing, no money, no wallet, no visa, no ID, nothing. And with Michael being in America on a spousal visa, if he was to get pulled over by the police and he didn't have any proof that he was here legally, you know, it could be some trouble for him. Um, so Angela was like, he left with nothing. So the first video that um, John Yates put up was like a four hour stream, I do believe. And that was up, that went up yesterday morning. So today is February 27th. It went up February 26th earlier that morning. Later, John goes live again and tells everybody, Michael ran away. He ran away and he is accusing Angela of being A B U S I V E. Bam, bam, to him and said that Angela was holding him under lock and key and he had to get out when she wasn't there. So I'm going to go over a quick rundown of the couple's timeline, the relationship timeline, and then we're going to get all into this because this is wild, you guys. Okay. I won't be able to see the comments in the chat for a minute. So bear with me. I got to go over to my notes. Okay. So fans were first introduced to angela and michael when they made their franchise debut on season two of 90 day fiance before the 90 days in 20 2018 after they connected online the couple began a long distance relationship and did not did not meet in person until they filmed their first episode of 90 day fiance before the 90 days so michael is from nigeria and angela is from hazelhurst georgia Angela and Michael's relationship had many up and I skipped a part of my script. Sorry, guys. Let me go back. So they first appeared on 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. Um, that's when they first met was the first uh, season of that. They later appeared on season one of 90 Day The Last Resort in August 2023 to work through infidelity and trust issues. Angela and Michael's romance has seen many ups and downs, including a brief split and then a reunion. They faced a frightening obstacle in February 2024 when Michael was reported missing after he finally made it to the U.S. All right. So like I said, 2018, they met um, online. They, they actually met in person when filming, filming 
the uh, 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days. That was 2018. January 2020, they tied the knot in Nigeria. So they got married. They just passed their four-year anniversary. They they got married in Nigeria, January 2020. March 2020, after returning home to Georgia following their wedding, Angela filed for Michael's visa in March 2020. However, the couple experienced experienced major delays in the process amid the COVID-19 pandemic. And they spent their relationship, you know, they spent a lot of their relationship as a long distance marriage. October 2020, Angela, Angela discussed her plans to undergo weight loss surgery during season five, 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After Tell All, which aired, like I said, October 2020. While she was excited about the procedure, Michael made it clear that he did not support the idea. He explained that he doesn't approve of anything surgery on his wife. No doing all this artificial stuff. I don't like it. I don't like it, Michael said. However, Angela, Angela, holy crap, I cannot talk today. I apologize. However, Angelina didn't listen to her husband's complaints and confirmed in March 2021 that she underwent gastric sleeve surgery. Now, in February 2022, Angela and Michael's co-star, Usman, Soldier Boy, allegedly alleged that the pair had called it quits. Sorry, had alleged that Angela and Michael split up. So on Instagram, Usman wrote, so this scammer called Angel Devil, now calling me and my innocent brother, at its Mr. Michael, names calling my, me and my innocent brother Michael names after using him to film for over four years and used all his money from Cameo to buy yourself a house. And you still refuse to take him to the U.S. And, le and leave him. So that's what Usma said. It's so hard to read, you know, when there's a language barrier and somebody's uh, a little familiar with English, but it's like choppy. But Usman basically said that Angela was using Michael that she had used him for four years to film the show and took his money that he made from Cameo and spent it on a house. Soulja Boy made the claims while reposting Angela's shady messages and screen grab of him, Usman, posing alongside Michael. And then Usman said, Michael, don't worry. I will personally take you to America. Now, in June of 2022, Angela shared an update about Michael's visa. She said, Michael and I have been waiting on the spousal visa for two years, and we still haven't gotten it approved. The wait is tough, so I just decided in the meantime to focus on my health. Then during the season seven, 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After reunion, which was filmed in September 2022 and aired in January 2023, Angela told the host, Sean Robinson, that she and Michael were still together. However, she admitted that she was considering getting a divorce. Two months after the tell-all was filmed, Angela hinted that she and Michael were still together by posting a video via TikTok to show that the couple to show the couple affectionately kissing each other on the cheek. During a December 2022 episode of 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After, fans watched as Angela learned that Michael had been cheating on her with an unidentified woman after she had just visited him in Nigeria. Angela's friend told her that Michael had been talking to someone else through Instagram for two months, and the friend had backed these claims up by providing Angela with screenshots and voice notes of the messages that Michael had sent to this woman. Michael told the other woman in a recording that we saw on the show, we got to see Angela listen to this recording, and it's Michael saying, I'm trying to call you now. You're not picking up. I've been busy trying to sort things out, okay? Just trust me, please. Also, I have some money coming to your side. I will let you know, okay? I will call you. Please, I love you and I miss you. It concluded with Michael giving kissy sounds. Angela broke down in tears after she played the audio message Michael sent to the other woman. She said in her confessional, can you believe he said that to this girl? That's how he would talk to me. He broke my heart. In touch. In Touch exclusively broke the news that Angela and Michael ended their relationship for good in January 2023. Wasn't really for good. So she told In Touch, yes, I can confirm. Well, this was March. Sorry. March, they're back together, and she confirms they're back together. 
Um, she said, Michael did cheat on me, but we are back together. So there's been infidelity. There's been, there's been a lot of my notes. I wrote these and I've been, had a really stressful day. So I'm sorry, but they're all over the place. All right. So August, 2023, Angela and Michael appeared on the first season of 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort, where they did couple th couples therapy to work through their issues with trust, intimacy, jealousy, and more. During the show, Angela presented Michael with divorce papers, but she ultimately decided to give him another chance in the end. She ripped up the divorce papers. After years of long distance relationship and waiting for his visa to get approved, Michael finally made it to the U.S. on the spousal visa in December 2023. He and Angela were spotted at a Walmart in Georgia. Now, um, cheating allegations are not the only the only problems that they've had. They Gosh, in the earlier episodes of the show, like when she would go visit him, she would really like talk down on his culture. Just from what I was watching, I was watching a lot of clips earlier, and uh, I watched one of the like first times she went to Nigeria, and he took her to the market, and she thought that she was going to like the market, like the market that we have like in the states, like an air conditioned an air conditioned store, but it was like a market outside where you walk through and you get what you need, and. She was like disgusted. She was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not shopping here. She also was like, listen, I'm an American. I'm not, you're not going to get like a Nigerian submissive woman out of me. There was one episode that I was watching clips from earlier where they were in Nigeria and they were at their apartment. And this was the same episode as um, them going to the market. But his mom was going to come over, like his mom and his sisters were going to come over. And he wanted Angela to like, cooked them a meal and she refused. She was like, I'm not doing that. I didn't come over to Nigeria to, to cook. She was like, that's not what we do in, in, you know, America. Like I'm independent. I run things. And she was very, 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 very jealous of him as well. She trashed his car. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. I mean, uh, it was just, you know, my husband has been to several different countries through the military. And he was actually watching the clips with me. And Angela walking through their market like this, that that's disrespectful to them. I mean, I know us as Americans, we may not consider that, but it is. When you're walking through their market, you know, and there's people there like working and you, you got your nose covered up and you're like looking in disgust, that is disrespectful. Um, but yeah, she refused to cook for his family. And I'm like, listen, I'm American. And if I know my mother-in-law is coming, I'll cook. This is the wildest thing because she's you know she's like i'm independent i'm not cooking for nobody and i'm like i would do that though i have done that like if my mom's coming over and i'll cook for my mom i'll cook for sean's mom sean can usually help me but even if he doesn't like you know i mean she wants to represent like an american woman but I, I that like that's not what like my granny got up at like five o'clock in the morning to make my my grandpa lunch before he left to go to work when he got home the house was clean you know, like, I'm just kind of like the American women that I know. Well, I know there's been like this shift and there's people that's like, we don't have to do that. And I'm all for women working. If that's not what, if you don't want to be a stay at home wife, that's fine. But she's dating a man from Nigeria that that's like their culture, that the women are stay at home wives that cook. And you know what I'm saying? Like you don't go get a man from over there and then be surprised that that's what he expects i don't know either way um yeah i cook for people because i love them but i'm independent so that was right i work it yeah it's just very i watched several clips today and i was just like i think she's got the wrong idea i think angela thinks that if she was to cook for him or cook for them then somehow she's beneath them but no like she should consider it like it like special like you know what i'm saying that for her to get to do that for her mother-in-law and her husband, like, so either way, there's been a lot of problems over the years with them fighting about, I'm not going to be submissive. I'm not Nigerian. You're not getting that. You might as well not even marry me if that's what you want, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, my husband is from Georgia. So he's like, I don't know what part of Georgia she's from, but like, even the women, that, my husband's like, even the women that I know in Georgia, like, they don't behave that way. <laughs> you know, my husband's like, her mom and you must be from like the same area. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, maybe. I don't know how far. She's from Hazelhurst. I don't know how far Mama June is, but they do kind of act kind of similar. Um, they must have DoorDash and McDonald's in Nigeria. I know, right? So 
anyways, there has been so much, you know, there's been split up back together. There's been cheating. There's been allegations that he was using her just to get to the States. There's been so much. Angela has been super, 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 super jealous of Michael. Um, one time in the earlier seasons, Michael wanted Angela to talk to, to some of his friends who had dual citizenship, who were from Nigeria, but it lived in the States as well, just for them to kind of explain to Angela, like their experience with both. And when she got there, she saw that some of the, the friends were females. She lost it. She got up, she left and um, she flipped out on him. <laughs> she was like, you did not tell me these were friends, like these, these, were girls. I thought I was coming to talk to guys. And I mean, it's just, she's been very um, jealous of Michael and maybe rightfully so from understanding, you know, there's been these allegations of, 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 of cheating and things like that, but she has always gotten back with him. And this is kind of the way that I feel about cheating and getting back with the person that cheats on you. I feel like if your man cheats and you find out, obviously you are going to be hurt for a while. There's going to be some trust issues there, but if you decide to take him back, Yes, he should rebuild trust, but you also have to allow him to rebuild trust. And if 10 years later or five years later, you were still like, if you were walking in Walmart and he even like glances at a woman and you freak out, like you just like, there's not going to be any getting over it. You know what I'm saying? So like, if you take them back, you got to allow them to build that trust back. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I did that cheat and apologize cycle forever and it never works out. Exactly. Anyways, anyways, a lot of people suspected that when Michael got here to the States, that he would leave. Some people suspected that he would not be able to handle Angela like 24-7 living with her and that they wouldn't make it very long. Either way, they've been waiting for this moment for seven years. They've been dating. Three years they've been waiting for the, the um, yeah, three years they've been waiting for the spousal visa. So they finally get it. He comes to he goes to Hazelhurst on December 22nd is whenever he makes it in. And immediately, the first, second, third day, the police show up at Angela's door to do a wellness check on Michael, which tells me there this was planned. Like, like I said, my husband was in here with me earlier and he's like, oh, like the police showed up the first three days he was there. He set this up like he told his family, all right, I'm supposed to land this day. On this day, this day, this day, call the police and have them do a wellness check to back up like his claims that she was a B. And I'm not saying that I don't think that she was or she wasn't. I've actually seen. I feel like Angela has two sides to her that I see. She has this one side that's like loud and funny. And if you're her friend, she'll have your back. But there's also a side of Angela that like just like Liz and Big Ed on uh, The Last Resort, when Liz and Big Ed were like having a fuss. And Angela, like, tried to, like, navigate or mediate that fuss. And Leah said, like, with all due respect, Angela, like, I'm not talking because you never let anyone speak. And Angela flipped out on her, got in her face, threatened to whoop her butt, like, threatened to get physical with her. So Angela also has no boundaries, you know. So do I think that Angela all of a sudden, you know, set some boundaries when it comes to Michael to not be physically or verbally, minimum verbally abusive to Michael. I don't know if I believe that. But still, I don't think anybody does deserve to put money, time, and energy into a relationship to get that person to the States and for that person to like boot out on them. You know what I'm saying? Like that's wild. Yes. Big Ed and Liz, they are split up and Liz is dating a new guy. So anyways, John Yates, who is really good friends with Angela, went live yesterday with the first video. I do have some clips, and I'm going to use them under fair use. I don't think John will do anything. Um, I highly recommend that you guys go check out those two live streams because one's like four hours. The other one's like five. Just maybe tomorrow when you're cleaning your house and you need something to listen to, put it on because I can't give you guys all the things, the little things that they talk about and everything that they say. So I am going to recommend go listen to the two videos. I'm going to play a couple of clips, okay? All right, so when John went live yesterday, the first time to announce that Michael had been missing, we're going to listen to that first. Hopefully, I can pull that one up first. All right, let's see. I got so many files here. Very passionate about the band, but like the optics of it. What? Looks like he... How did you get there? Swartz? <laughs> what? Okay, wrong file. How is this today? I don't even know. 
Schwartz. Get out of there, Schwartz. Okay, this one should. I'm at Angela's house. There's just no easy way to say this. I'm just going to rip it off like a Band-Aid. Michael has been missing since Friday the 23rd. You know, Michael just gotten here Christmas time. I know that everybody's been waiting to see them finally get together. I know I have after. So Michael got in at December 22nd. So almost exactly two months to the day he disappears. Seven years and, you know, we've seen how much they love each other. And Angela's not, a, well, she's she's right next to me. But uh, on Friday, Angela had went to the store to go Sorry. pick up lunch for the kids. Michael was home. When she got back, Michael was gone. He's been gone since then. Police had like a ball, like, you know, be on the lookout for him. And um, right before we got here this morning, the detective had called Angela back and they said that they elevated it to a missing person. In Georgia now, it's a statewide thing. And I, my understanding of it is if he's not found in a few more days afterwards, then it'll go to like a national level. Michael. So this was the first video that John put out. We're going to go through several clips. And I think I have maybe a total of like five minutes in clips, but it's some of the more interesting parts of telling the story of exactly what happened. So John, when Angela called him and said, Michael's missing, John Yates and his hubby Cody took off to Georgia to be with Angela. So this is him breaking the news. Left everything here. I know that there's people probably thinking, oh, maybe he just left or whatever, but like nothing not any ID, nothing to show his name on it, no clothing, not a toothbrush, 0.00. .00. No wallet, is nothing. Clothes on his back is what he left with on Friday. That's wild. Okay, so that's one thing that obviously led Angela and John and Cody and everybody around to believe uh, something must have happened because he left with nothing, the clothes on his back. And I'm going to address this one comment in the comments. Um, when people comment on my stuff telling me not to talk about celebrities, people that's on active running TV shows or somebody that's been on a TV show for 10 plus years and still participates as an influencer on social media. If I stop talking about influencers and celebrities and everybody else that maybe had, you know, doesn't agree with their every action, if everybody stopped talking about these celebrities, guess what? They would no longer be valuable. They would no longer profit they, because nobody would talk about them. Us talking about these people keeps them relevant and it keeps them valuable. So while Angela, you know, may not like everything that I said about her, you ever heard the saying all press is good press or like something like that? Like that is how it is with celebrities. That is absolutely how it is. And just like E! News, if they report on this, they may say something like, well, Angel, you know, a Angela can be explosive from time to time. So while I may not say everything positive about Angela. I'm just going to give my, this is what I do. I cover reality TV, reality TV news and gossip. And this is just my opinion. I've watched 90 Day Fiance for years. I watched Angela for years. I've covered her from time to time. I literally watched the clip from where she like beat up her friend. So I'm just, do I think maybe she was a little too much for Michael? Sure. Michael comes from Nigeria where women are quiet and meek and would never even think to step up to their husband. You know what I'm saying? Like, so anyways, um, if you come in here and you tell me not to talk about somebody, just consider that these people want us to continue talking about them because they know if everybody stopped, they would no longer, they would have to get normal jobs. If, if everybody quit talking about them anyways, Okay, so let's go ahead and let's listen to the second clip. So this was the first clip where they are announcing that Michael is gone. And I think the second clip is also coming from the first video as well, where they just kind of talk more in depth about, you know, he didn't take anything. At Angela's house, there's just no easy way to say this. I'm just going to rip it off like a Band-Aid. Michael has been missing since Friday. That's the same one. Bear with me, guys. Um, when I was, like, getting all this together... I had so many technical difficulties. It was like ridiculous. Well, it's safe. There's the good news. We reached out to the police moments after this live just ended up. This live, my, I'm just, I have not slept. I'm sorry. Right after the live ended, Angela got a phone call from the police here stating that they were called, contacted by Michael 
They verified it was him through a um, screenshot. He did have a burner phone or like another phone, a phone that nobody knew about. And on that phone, he had pictures, I guess. Who took, does that? He took pictures of his passport, the one that left. he left. They verified his ID. It's him. And here's the uh, the wild part. Here's the Yahoo boy part. <laughs> um, he... Can I say something really quickly? I have a little bit of a cringe pet peeve right there. Oh, my goodness. Um, that part, because I had to clip, I listened to these same parts like a million times. And I know Cody is John Yates's, you know, hubby. And um, my hubby comes in from time to time. So I'm all for like his hubby joining him. But if my husband was missing, if I invested eight, seven, eight years into a relationship, spent thousands of dollars and just this just happened to me. And then somebody did that when we're announcing to the world that I, yep, I was scammed. And then somebody, if somebody was like, Whoa, I would probably be like, what? Like, why are you acting that way? Like, have a little bit of respect about what I'm going through. Like, this is real life. Like, this is not something for you to like laugh like that about. Like, I don't know. I'm not gonna lie. Like, when I heard Cody do that, I was just like, is Angela gonna get on to him for like laughing about that? Either way, this is a clip where Michael comes back the second video saying he's been found. He told. <laughs> He told the police that he was in fear of his life. Here. Not telling the reason. He did not want the police knowing where. No, I. Uh, oh, where he, Michael didn't want Angela knowing his location. He told the police not to tell her. Okay, so he's gone. They report that he's gone. Angela is very upset. She's like, he left with nothing, so that's why I'm scared. They went to the police. The police put out a bolo. They elevated it to a missing person. John did a four-hour stream, a four-hour stream, and then he comes back because about 30 minutes after his stream ended, the police call Angela and say, we just heard from Michael. He's fine. He doesn't want me to tell you where he is because he said that you were A-B-U-S-I-B-E, -E, that he had to escape. So he doesn't want me to tell you where he's at. He had a burner phone. He called the police from a burner phone. He had taken pictures of his visa and all of that with his burner phone so that he could at least have evidence if he was stopped, you know, along the way that he was in America illegally. Um, yeah, Tiff said, I thought the same thing when he laughed. Yes, like if my husband had just like did that to me and we're like trying to tell the world and some somebody laughed like that. I would be like, this is not funny, you know, trying to work through all of these um, clips. All right. It's safe. There's a good news. Same one. All right. Let's see. Michael is safe. Y'all bear with me. This is ridiculous. All these clips. So there's a few things I want to you can start with that. That was five days ago. So this was, you know, five days ago. Five days ago in New York. Isn't he scared? Okay, so I do want to increase the photo here. Sharon says Michael told the cops that she tore up his passport and broke his phone, which was not the truth. Okay, exactly. So here's what we know. Michael told the police, and we're gonna to get to that part where John tells the audience that Michael told the police she tore up my visa and broke my phone. Now, he said, um, John said, I have his visa right here. I'm looking at it. I could post a picture, but I would need to redact it, right? So you guys can see that it hasn't been torn up. As far as the phone, we don't know if it's broken or not. I, I would assume since Michael lied about the visa, he's probably lying about the phone too. Now, they're saying, oh, look, this was just a few days ago in Las Vegas. Does he look scared? Does he look like, um, you know, a, an abused husband and all of that? And it shows him smiling and Angela partying. Now, what I will say to that is I think that's unfair to show a picture of Michael and Angela smiling together and saying, oh, well, because they're smiling together and they seem happy. Clearly, he's not an abused partner. That's not fair because... 
That's true. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll try to give them a break. I mean, I try not to be too harsh on like partners on YouTube channels because my you know mine will come in as well. But that laugh just kind of like got to me. And maybe it's because I listened to it so many times. Maybe he was a little delirious from no sleep and the stress. So you know. So yeah, that was not fair to say because, I mean, how many times you know? Look at Chris Watts and Shanann Watts. Every photo of them, they seem like the perfect couple living the American dream. That wasn't the case. You know what I'm saying? There, there's so many wives that end up deceased. Husbands, you, you, you know, like that literally they travel. Um, what about the, the wife who is literally in prison right now because she poisoned her husband? They traveled a lot. There, they, there were photos of them looking happy and in love. When literally he was telling his sister, if anything happens to me, I think it's her. I think she's trying to poison me. He literally had told his sister that. Like, if, if I think she's trying to poison me. When we were in, like, I think it was, like, Monaco or something, like, months prior. You know, he's like, she gave me a drink, and, like, I got sick, and I passed out. Like, so you cannot show a photo of somebody looking happy and disclaim abuse claims. Like, you just can't do that. It's not fair to the real victims out there and anybody watching their show that is a victim that sees that and hears that, then they're going to think like, oh my God, like, I, you know, I got to show the world how sad I am. You can't do that, especially if you're living in a household where your spouse or your partner is abusive. You can't post sad pictures all the time, looking sad, talking about how horrible your life is, because if your partner sees it, what are they going to do? You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people put on this facade that they are living a happy life. But behind closed doors, you know, things are going on that people don't know about. So I think that was wrong for them to say that. Um, but, you know, maybe they just weren't really thinking. All right, let's continue. Um, right now. Can you mention this, Tony? Because I yeah. know that he's been treating me like shit. So I asked him after we came to New York. I asked him to go. Okay, so one thing is also that uh, I think is relevant. Is in the first, the first um, video, Angela said everything was fine. She's like, things was fine. We've been traveling. Like, you know, I had no idea. Like, so I don't think he, I don't think he left. But now in the second video, she is saying that they had actually gotten into it and that he had been treating her like crap. And she had told him, if you don't love me, go back to Nigeria. So I saw when I was watching this, people in the comment section was like, well, wait. Angela said in the first video that they were getting along fine. Now we're hearing that that's not the case, which maybe, maybe I really do think that Angela thought something bad had happened, that she really didn't think he left. And if she told people that they had that little dispute, then people's, you know, opinions would lead more towards, oh, he left you. And she really didn't want people to think that. So maybe she just didn't volunteer that information. But either way, either way, she says now, yes, yeah, she may have been protecting him in the beginning. I think this is just a bad situation. Exactly. All right. So we're going to back it up a little bit because I did stop it a couple of times. And I will say these clips are like kind of edited because he stopped. Uh, you could hear Cody talking in the background. Angela would talk in the background. So I did kind of have to piece them together so they wouldn't be so long. And so it would take out Cody talking or Angela talking or, or John uh, dead silence or him saying, um, I say um a lot. So I did just kind of edit it out to put it all together. What he was trying to say, it. what he was trying to say, put it all together. So there's a few things I want to. You start with that. That was five days ago. So this was, you know. Five days ago. Five days ago in New York. Isn't he scared? Um, right now. Can you mention this to me? Because I yeah. know that he's been treating me like shit. So I asked him after we came to New York. I asked him to go home because he, he doesn't love me. And. Because he's now he's going to fight for his visa here and use that is what I'm told. Because I asked him to go home because he doesn't love me. And then he disappeared. That's it. From December 23rd to two months, right? In those two months, he came here. They, Angela and Michael, went to California for like over a week. New York, Florida. I mean, it's not Monte Carlo, but in in the course of seven weeks, I'd say no one was being locked up here. I don't know why people don't think I'm not human. Okay. So, um, Angela kind of starts talking about, you know, 
because a lot of the comments after this broke, people were like, well, that's what she gets, you know, things like that. Family was, I guess his family was super. Oh, and I do apologize. I literally screen recorded these clips 50, 11 times, but because my phone storage was full, it was saying that they weren't recording. So I did it 70 times and then they all started like popping up on my phone. So this one has this little iPhone storage full. I do apologize. It will go away in a minute. I do apologize. Anyways, let's listen. The family was, I guess his family was super worried for him that they sent out the cops for a welfare check on the second day he was here. The first day, the second day and the third day. The cops got there and Michael out of fear for his life admitted to them he was all right. Angela proceeded to beat the living shit out of Michael and questioned him about the police and he told her he didn't know who sent them out. She proceeded to place him on house arrest, <laughs> making sure he didn't see the light of day. Get him with all the evidence we see a lot of day. How many times? Now this is Angela's daughter speaking now. Her, she has an adult daughter. He left the house by himself. How many times he drove the car by himself? How many clubs he's been to since he's been here by himself? How many times has he been out of not one state, three states? Well, get your life straight, boy. That's the only way he can keep his visa is by saying he fears his life. So um, that's, now that's his new life. On the 23rd of February, Angela got out of the house as usual to buy her cigarettes, forgetting to lock the door. In my view right now, I see one, two, three doors. Get Let that. the seven-year-old home alone disappear. That's why we thought something happened to him to begin with. Thank you, we didn't think he was dumb enough to leave a seven-year-old child by herself. Okay, so that's another thing, too. That's another reason why they thought that this was legit. Because Michael was at home with Angela's granddaughter by himself while Angela went to the store. And I had a little bit of like a sinking feeling when I heard that. But maybe it's just because um yeah that's okay princess let me tell you something i'm married to my husband and i don't always agree with him my mama love her to death i don't always agree with her but that's okay like um there's a part of angela that i that i really like sometimes i watch her on the show and i'm like she's just so funny like she got your back if you're her friend but then sometimes she may not like her and her other friend you know that one friend in new york they got into a fist fight but it's just i mean you know i don't hate her at, by any means at all and i do feel sad for the whole situation i couldn't imagine this happening uh to, to me or anybody else you know even her but i haven't seen them neither one of them treat each other the best do i think he got over here and he purposely that he wanted to get to america and he used angela for that yes <laughs> but lord he went through some battles and some hurdles to get over here he must have really wanted over here you know what i'm saying either he really loved her and got here and the the arguing got worse and he was like i'm out or he planned it and he withstood everything that she threw his way because i watched some of the clips today and i was just even my husband was like oh my god you know but i treat people in a way that i want to be treated you know what i'm saying i I don't believe, and even even if you're a, an adult talking to people like they're trash, I just don't. And I've just seen that with Angela. I, I don't think this is her fault, though. Um, I mean, all her fault. I think neither one of them was in the right. That's just kind of my perspective. But you are absolutely okay to, you know, think and feel however you want. That is, and there's going to be some people in the chat that love John Yates, some that don't, some that love Angela, some that don't, some that thinks Michael, you know, deserved to come to the U.S. And, and live his life since he put up with Angela. You know, there's going to be so many opinions on this because of this relationship. I mean, it really is. Um, neither of them are innocent. That's just my opinion. That's kind of mine as well. Uh, he didn't just wake up. They had a fight and he decided to leave. He had this all planned before he arrived in the U.S. And I do think he had this plan before he arrived in the U.S. And the reason why is because of those three welfare checks right when he got to the u.s he told angela he didn't know why his family was calling in welfare checks but they were angela also said in one of the clips she was like i'm gonna say it tlc can fire me if they want to and john was like no angela don't 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 because they just filmed they literally just filmed for one of the upcoming shows and they filmed him coming to the u.s from my understanding they filmed the first like you know month and a half that he was here or so and that's going to come out, I think, in like March. 
So they have a whole season that they have filmed that we don't know about. We don't know what's happened. But Angela, she dropped some tea on some of the clips in John Yates' video. And she literally said, and she said, like, they might, may fire me, they may not, whatever. But she said, I called him in two scamming groups. And these scammer groups that she called him in was him trying to help other Nigerians trick women into, like, falling for them so they could get to the United States. It may have not been worded just like that, but she said he was in two scamming groups helping people get to the U.S. So I definitely think he wanted to be here, and he told his family, I'm going to land on this day, this day to start calling in welfare checks. Uh, this is the address. Send them. That way, when I leave in two, three, four, five, six months, we have that evidence that, like, right from the beginning, there was problems. So I do think, and another thing is, like Angela's daughter said, that way he can keep his visa. So he is here on a spousal visa. He doesn't have dual citizenship yet. Um, he's here on a spousal visa. Well, if they're not married, can he keep his visa? Can he stay? I don't know. But if he has to leave his spouse because of abuse, he can stay. So that's what I think he's probably doing. Right. I don't think Michael should have made Angela worry. That wasn't right. I think Michael watched the other 90 day people like Eve and Muhammad. Is that how you say it? Eve and Muhammad and some others. I can't remember their names who claimed abuse and they got to stay. Yes. Rusa says, I'm pretty sure he was never into her ever. He just played the part until he got here. Finally, that is why he never calls and gets caught cheating. He forgot about her while waiting. Um, but I do just want to kind of be put it out there that I have no ill feelings for any of them. I mean, Angela, like I said, I watch her at times and I'm like, man, she has, she's so funny. She has her friends back. And then I'll see her talking to people a certain way and just being like super disrespectful. And I'm just like, ee, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I know her and John Yates are super close. Um, and that's all good and great. Um, I do think I have a few more video files that like. I stand up to women. Mark, and yeah. when, when you sneak behind my back and do lying shit on me, Johnny, I'm, I, I'm not crying no more. I'm mad as hell now. Tell I would be me. mad too. So needless to say, somebody sent me this. It was an Instagram post. It's from this Angela and Michael account, which was written um, four hours ago. It reads, I believe by now, some of you must have seen this. Michael is not missing and has already communicated with the Hazelhurst Police Department and the bolo taken down. Michael arrived in the U.S. a little over two months ago, and ever since it's been hell on earth for him. Angela sees his sure, passport. Know, always the victim. Okay, I have his passport in my hand right now. Angela sees his passport, tore it, and smashed his phone. I have his, I mean, I can't show it to you because obviously it would show all the information, but I can take a picture with it and redact everything if you need to see it. Making it impossible to communicate with anyone, not even his own family. She took Michael to the bank, created an account, and then seized the debit card to the account, giving Michael no access to his own money. So that is, somebody posted that on like a, a page about Michael and Angela, but they seem to know a lot of information and they didn't say like, oh, this is my thought. This is my theory. This is my opinion. They said, this is what happened. He got there. And as soon as he got there, she became abusive. Um, his parents called or his family called in the wellness check, but he lied and said he was fine because he was scared. And then as soon as the police left, Angela questioned him. And he said, I don't know. And Angela beat him. Um, let me see. I think that's all of the clips. Woman, I stand up for women. I wish these were the same in a better order. Family was, su I guess his family was super worried for him that they sent out the cops for a welfare check on the second day he was here? The first day, the second day, and the third day. The cops got there and Michael, out of fear for his life, admitted to them he was all right. Angela proceeded to beat the living shit out of Michael and questioned him about the police and he told her he didn't know who sent them out. 
she proceeded to place him on house arrest, <laughs> making sure he didn't see the light of day. Get him with all the evidence he's the light of day. How many times he left the house by himself? How many times he drove the car by himself? How many clubs he's been to since he's been here by himself? How many times has he been out of not one state, three states? Well, get your life straight, boy. That's the only way he can keep his visa is by saying he fears his life. So um, that's, now that's his new life. On the 23rd of February, Angela got out of the house as usual to buy her cigarettes, forgetting to lock the door. In my view right now, I see one, two, three doors. Get Left that. the seven-year-old home alone disappeared. That's why we thought something happened to him to begin with. Thank you, Mel. think he was dumb enough to leave a seven-year-old child by herself. Okay. So I'd already played that one, but I went ahead and let it play just for anybody that's coming in new or whatever. Um, so, yeah, they did say, you know, he didn't take, I think they said, no, he didn't take the car. Um, he doesn't have a car, but then she did say he does drive. I don't know. I don't know if Michael has his license in the States. He's been here for two months, so it's possible he has his license. I don't know. Um, but yeah, she does say like he leaves the house, but you know, here's what I have to say. I just, I get kind of the word, their way of thinking, say in that household, there's no physical A B U S I V E going on that it's just like more verbal, like yelling and screaming and kind of the way that we've seen Angel on the show before, you know, um, how she can be very high strong, very aggressive. Say it's that. Um, and not not physical. So in their mind, they're thinking, hey, he knew she was like this. She's this uh, and actually um Angela and Angela's daughter basically said that angela is not abusive she's just a hurt woman you know who has dealt with a lot of cheating so she doesn't you know she when she's behaved certain ways it's been out of like hurt it's not been for x y and z to be abusive or whatever um but what is the statistic for actual abuse victims seven they leave anywhere from like five to seven times before they actually leave and they live normal lifestyles people on the outside don't usually know so like them i do feel like any like abuse victim that may be living that life watching john and hearing them make those claims like oh he went to the store by himself he went to the club by himself you know they may be sitting there thinking like yeah i do too but my husband still beats me and i haven't had the reason to leave or I hadn't been able to leave or you know i haven't had the resources to leave or blah 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 blah, blah you know so I get what maybe their way of thinking, but it's not correct in my opinion, just because somebody, you know, goes to the store and drives around on their own. Um, it doesn't mean that they are not a victim. You know? Uh, but yes, so they do say basically he had a burner phone while he left with no money. Angela said he may have left with like $40. It appears, it appears that he was like stashing money away angela's daughter said that here and there money would come up missing that like her daughter had money that came up missing that she had a diamond ring on the nightstand by her bed the night before he went missing and then the day that he goes missing it's gone so they seem to believe that you know the past two months he's been like taking money here and there and stashing it away for this time for you know his time to leave he had a phone he had taken pictures of his driver's lot not his driver's license whatever identification he had as well as his visa and all of that um yes uh somebody asked about why michael was keeping the granddaughter uh not sure why maybe mom was at work or angela has custody she went to go get them so yes I think they don't they all live together like don't angela's granddaughters and her daughter live with her i could be wrong but i don't know yeah maybe she helps raise her kids um so daughter was gone angela was there and leaves to go get them lunch and cigarettes and even asked michael what do you want and he's like i want x y and z and then he le she leaves and he leaves leaving the seven-year-old there alone and i'm not going to put this on like michael or angela or anybody but i will just say this like she's seven years old and she was just airlifted to a hospital not too long ago because she fell and hit her head and she had cysts in her head nobody knew that she had these cysts and they like when she fell 
and hit her head, one ruptured, and she had to be life flighted to a hospital. You know, it was a big old situation. So she's now all of a sudden at home by herself because Michael leaves. Like, my goodness. Like, but also I will say when I did hear like Michael was babysitting a seven year old, there was like this mom part of me that was like, oh, do you know him well enough to leave him alone with your seven year old granddaughter? Just because like, Every female that I know has been sexually assaulted as a child. Most, like almost everybody I know was, was sexually assaulted by a child and it was someone they knew. So, and I'm not throwing that on Michael. I don't want it to sound that way, but I, you know, that when I heard it, I was just like, eee, like, I might would have brought my seven year old granddaughter with me just because I made them all come. Like, hey, let's all go. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want it to sound like I'm putting that out there, but this is just something that I thought about. That's why you don't leave your child with your husband. That is not related. Check the stats. Yeah, that's always my first thought. How well is this person trusted? No offense. Exactly. And Michael, you know, may be a great guy. Great scammer guy that would never touch a child. But as a mom who was abused myself as a child and so many of my family members, friends were abused as children by people that they knew. It just like set, on, set off an alarm in my head. I was like, hey, like, oh. anyways, there's so much more info on there. Um, They did say on the first video, whenever they were talking about him leaving, somebody come in the chat and was like, yeah, I was watching this other YouTuber named like Cody who said they spotted Michael in Vegas two or three days ago. And Angela's like, what? Who was it that said that? Can you find the video? And she said, that one makes sense. Because my psychic said that he was in Vegas and this was a scam. And I'm like, is this the same psychic that we've seen on the show? Angela goes to a psychic. She has like her psychic. And I'm like, I know Angela went to the psychic on the show. I remember her going to the psychic on the show. I don't remember what the psychic said, but I'm like, why your psychic didn't tell you ahead of time? You know, like, did you go to your psychic before you brought him here? To be like, okay, is he a scammer? And she was like, good to go, darling. And now all of a sudden she's like, oh, now that he's left, yep, I think he's in Vegas. Like, psychic Tracy. Okay, if memory serves me correct, on one of the episodes, her and her friend JoJo went to see the psychic, or maybe her and her daughter, to find out if Michael was a scammer. And she was told no, right? But now she's like, yep, that's what my psychic said. My psychic said he was in Vegas. That lines up and that he, this is all a scam. The cops do know where he's at. And he's not getting in trouble because he told the cops that he had to leave um, when she was gone, that that was his only time to leave. Kelly said, I think she's been asked multiple times on the show. Right. So, um, yeah, he said he was in fear for his life. That's what he told the police. He said, I was in fear for my life. I had to get out when I could. She left to, to go to the store, so I had to leave. So. Yeah, that's a little strange. Now, when I was looking up for everything, I come across this article that says 90 Day Fiance, Angela Deem's Worst Feuds Explained. And I was kind of going through it. And I remember several of her feuds. Outside of her feuds with Michael, she's been in a lot. Like, she's gotten in Yara's face. Her and Soldier Boy. Her former best friend, JoJo. And that was all over, like, JoJo not giving her credit for, like, meeting somebody. She slapped a pal at a hotel, which was one of her friends that does, like, her Botox. Um, Jennifer, she threatened Yara. Um, she's had a lot of nasty fights with Michael. Yeah, so, Liz, I mean, so many. Whole thing is sad, yeah. So I think neither one is like completely innocent because I just think like we, sorry guys. Right, Kelly, true story. I don't think neither one is innocent, but do I think with 
even with Angela with like our anger issues, oh uh, man, that like, because when you bring somebody over here on a visa, you are responsible for them. Like, I think indefinitely now. I know it used to be for like 10 years, but now I think you are like indefinitely responsible for them. So like, if he does anything, I, I don't even know. I don't even know, you know? How sad if Michael does actually have a girlfriend and he ran off, and I think he probably does. See, that's like kind of the, like she can be belligerent and obnoxious, but I know she's very kind, generous heart at the same time. See, I see both sides of her. I see the both sides of her with that. I was done with her after I found the Mor the Mori footage. Isn't it wild? Wonder why she didn't go to Jerry Springer. Anyways, you guys, let me see. I do have some notes. Let me make sure I got over everything. So yeah, Angela mentions that Michael was in chat groups helping others work the system to get to the states. Angela said her psychic told her though he was in Vegas. Why well, has the psychic told her this before? That like red flag, red flag. Um, yeah, my husband believes that Michael's family was in on it, and this was the plan from the beginning, which was why the welfare calls were made. So here's a Johnny Ace's page. If you guys don't want to go watch the full videos, I'm so tired today. It's been a stressful day. All right, Satan. So this was the first one, 90 Day Fiance Breaking News. It was four hours long. Y'all say I go long? Did I go long, live long? John Yates go live for a long, long time. And then Angela Michael update. And that one was two hours. So it's, you know, some footage. If you want to go to bed tonight, listen to something in your ear, <laughs> I highly recommend it because there's so much going on in the background with Angela talking with, you know, Angela dropping tidbits from stuff that, ha you know, that we were, we're going to see on the show, I would imagine. Um, yeah, I thought Angela did go to Jerry Springer. Apparently it was Mari. But the comments, y'all, let me see. The comments were, let me read some of them. This is how a battered wife leaves her husband. I'm not accusing Angela, but clearly he walked away from her on his own. There is more behind his leaving her. And you haven't told exactly what problems you two were having. So we understand why he left. Join me as I take a deep dive into the least. She fought so hard to get him here. I recall her constantly holding him coming over here over his head, even going to her lawyer. This is something that, that can be fact checked on the show. Come on with this. Somebody said on John Yates' video, I don't like the whispering and muting. If you're looking for a missing person, you need to be transparent and not constantly whispering or muting, which I will say to the constant muting and whispering when they're live. Angela is in a contract with a network for a TV show. So technically there's things she's not supposed to say. You know, doesn't the K-1 visa include that the person who's the sponsor is responsible? So it used to be 10 years, but now I think it's indefinitely. Um, I understand that Sherry, like I get what you're saying, but I will just say a lot of times children that are molested, it is by people they know very good. And, and you know, what's even, and I'm not throwing this on anybody. I'm not accusing anybody. I'm just saying a lot of times the adult will be very fond of the children. Even like to their parents, they will like, have like a closeness or, you know, oh, just love these children. And then, so, you know, just because somebody's close, because listen, it was a family member that did it to me. Um, I know people, it was an uncle, a favorite uncle, you know? So I've just, I just feel like people need to just think about it and, put, and, and you know, be cautious, talk to the children, you know, about it. You know, if they're going to leave a child with a friend, Hey, how do you feel staying with them? And then when you get back, hey, did everything go as planned? You know, did they treat you okay? And make sure children know they're no-no places. You know, they're no-no squares. <laughs> Anyways, 
Um, the fact that he walked out of the door by himself means he was not kidnapped. No neighbor neighboring cameras captured him walking on the street. He definitely might have gotten picked up, either promised a better life or planned this all. Screw the show. A man's life is more important than ratings. I hope he's found soon. He left because he was stressed out. He left because he was stressed out. I can see why he left. He good. Ain't nothing wrong with him but leaving a toxic situation. They probably were disrespecting him terribly. I hope this wasn't something he planned. I hope he is safe wherever he is. He left those items on purpose. He doesn't want to be found. She has anger issues and probably has had enough. The camera saw him leaving on his own. So, Angela, he's gone. And I'm just reading the comments in order. I'm not picking and choosing. I'm just reading them straight in order. So, don't think I'm, like, purposely finding ones that, like, seem to, like, attack, you know, one person and not the other one. I hope he's okay and found safely. The amount of times that was muted and blacked out is highly suspect. Michael is fine. He got what he wanted. Why do you think he took so much off of her? He was waiting for Angela to leave. Someone picked him up. He had it all planned out. Nothing's wrong. Go to sleep. That's weird. Cody said we need a search party. And Angela screams, no, because he, because he's, and then John mutes it. This live stream is a hot mess. Why ask for the public's help, but hide important information? So suspicious. I don't think he left his passport there. I think she locked it up to make sure he couldn't go nowhere. This has been done many times to people before. Maybe he contacted the immigration lawyer that specializes in foreigners in America who are being abused by their host. Then this guy makes the person disappear but just from the abuser and helps them keep their green card and helps them get their new identification. <laughs> He's like, well, we're going all uh, witness protection over here. Um, so anyways, right, Valerie. Kelly says, I think Michael scammed Angela, but I honestly can't imagine living with her and listening to Angela yelling as much as she does. Jackie, you're wrong again. The cops put out a bolo on Friday and it turned into a business person on Monday. And that's when they were able to announce it publicly. I don't know what Jackie said. Am I, am I missing comments? I don't, I don't see that comment that you were responding to. But um, All right, you guys. So that's where we're at. I would like to hear Michael's side of the story. Probably never know the whole truth. So would I. Michael, let's see. Listen, the, the network knows about it. I don't see a Jackie either, so I don't know who she's responding to. I don't, um, Sherry, I don't know who you're responding to because I don't see a Jackie. Love, so I don't know. Oh, this is wild. Anyways, you guys, she did contact the network. Oh, now I see Jackie. There are celebrities that can put it out Friday on their own. YouTube app is acting weird. See, I did see people saying that, like, oh, this is fake. You are faking it. And John was like, call the police. Here's the number. They'll verify the information. Pull a FOIA report. So I think it's legit. I mean, here's the thing. Michael is here on a spousal visa. If they fake this for like ratings of the show, like he could get in trouble for this. So, I, I mean, I think he came here and he left, you know, like, um, I mean, I don't think this is fake for the show. And Angela was like, I'm the, she said something like, I'm the biggest name on that show. Like, they're not going to let me go. You know, I don't have to do anything for cloud. Like, this is my life. You know, this is my husband. So I do think it's real. I think it's real because literally him being, he, I honestly think if they, this is, if this was a stunt, they could go to jail for lying to the police, you know? So I don't think it's a lie. I think he came and left and that was his plan more than likely. And whoever that female was, he was talking to that day. Whenever Angela heard the voice recordings, I think he may have him a little boo thing somewhere and they linked up. Yeah. It was real. It was their way of getting it out to the public. Yeah. Because Johnny Yates does have a you know big platform. I mean, it literally spread like wildfire.
Yes. So Michael is fine. Nobody knows where he is. The police, they know where he is. He's told the police where he's at. He's told the police, don't tell Angela where I'm at. I'm fearful of my life. I don't want her coming for me. Like, uh, he literally said he feared for his life. Oh, okay, Kelly. Can Michael be arrested? Not technically, unless, I mean, no, I don't think so. Um, if he has any, like, evidence, like, if he, I don't know, I don't know what evidence he would have, but any evidence of, like, any type of abuse, and that would help his claims, and, you know, but no, because he didn't file charges claiming abuse, he just left, and when they called him, he said, there's a big Nigerian community in Atlanta. Hmm. I wonder if Michael has any secret recordings. Possibly. I mean, he, I mean, that would be smart of him if he did do that. And listen, he had his family sending the police there the first day he was there. So anything's possible. He may have recordings of arguments and stuff like that. Um, now they do the new season starts, uh, I think in March, so they have a whole nother season and with him coming to the United States, I think that was going to be enough, you know, like people have waited on this for so long to see them together. So I don't, I don't think him leaving is fake, especially considering that the police are involved and with him just coming over here on an, on a visa, him, now him lying to the police. He could go to jail and he could be deported. If Michael lied and he's up in a hotel and Angela put him in a hotel because they, they plied at this, yeah, they could both go to jail and he could be deported. So I don't think they would risk it just for the show. Um. Anyways, you guys, like, share, subscribe. Angela was on 90 Day Diaries last night. Who the hell? <laughs> exactly, right? Um, you guys are your thoughts. What do you guys think has happened here? Do you guys think this is fake for the show? Do you guys think that he planned this? Do you guys think that he should have left or that he shouldn't have left? What do you guys think? What do y'all think? I want to hear y'all's thoughts in the comment section. Reminds me of the U visa that was brought up when Muhammad may have tried to pull a, is it yet, Eve, in Mexico when he claimed to have been abused, although Angela is you know, not being negative, telling me. Yeah, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Um, just make sure everybody is nice. If you don't agree with somebody's opinion, that is A-OK. -okay. And if you want to have a conversation with them about their opinion to see, you know, if maybe you can give them information to help them maybe be, you know, change their opinion, whatever, just do it in a respectful way. Um, I will be checking comments, you know, over the next few days on this video. And anybody that's just being nasty, calling names or anything like that, your comment will be, will be deleted. And if I see it multiple times, I'll have to block you. Because we are all entitled to our opinions. Um, you know, uh, we just got to make sure we are pleasant to each other in the conversation. Like, share, subscribe. I'm going to keep my eye on the situation. Anything that happens, I'm going to talk about it with you guys. And like I said, there's still so much content over on Johnny H's channel from the two videos. Go check them out. I've linked his channel in the description box below. Go check it out, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.